No one thought that it could happen, but there finally came a day when there was no more magic in the village of Daget. And Colas was sad. The change came in a crawl of silence and also darkness. No one knew exactly when it began. It must have started the day the sun refused to wake from its blanket of blue waters to the east. Or it must have been the night the moon refused to talk to the stars. Or perhaps it was that morning when the cocks did not bother to crow a welcome chorus to the beginning light. Or perhaps that evening when the night breeze took to a bed in a deep sleep and nothing stirred all night. Not even the frogs or the crickets, the used to lull the village into slumber with their constant music. Or it must have been the moment the light faded away from the cluster of trees, the village fireflies danced in. No one knew. Only Kulas knew, but he was only a boy, and all he could do for magic was to make things, small things, fly about him. The other people in the village of the Get had so much more magic than him. Some could steal typhoons with the purity of their songs. Some could control the waxing and waning of the moon with poetry. Others could speak in the language of the old forest spirit. And still others could make delicacies, cakes and pastries made from old and secret recipes that conjured up long lost memories of love and sometimes even hate. He sadly told himself that in a town full of magic, no one would certainly believe a young boy who could only make things, small things, fly. If the people of the village were only a bit more aware of the slight snip of the changing air, they could have divined the many small moments which could be said to have sparked magic's unexpected retreat from the get, but no one knew. There were, of course, the lazy sun and the sad moon and the unlit fireflies and the muted songs of nocturnal musicians. Perhaps, it could have even begun the moment when Pedrito, Kula's older brother, whispered carelessly to a stray wind. I don't believe in magic anymore. Just like that, the wind whispered it back to the quick silver spread of air. You must understand this was not a solitary, uncommon wish. There were already many people in the get, conscious of the practical changes sweeping the nearby villages and islands who thought of magic as a relic from the old days, the gift of ancient Babylons, who were no more than shadows of primordial tales. Perhaps they thought that they could do something more than magic. Something more useful. Mom and Doi said, more useful than common magic. I could be a nerd, said Maria. I don't want to think anymore. I could be a consider agent. Said Pedrito. I don't want to play games anymore. I could be a lawyer. Said Rosario. I don't want to bake sweet pies anymore. I could be an accountant. Said Aling Pinin. I don't want to write poems anymore. Magic, they said, had no more place in the get. With each quiet pronouncement, the fireflies died off one by one, and soon only traces of the magical remain. And so the magic slowly faded away. No one in the village knew. No one in town noticed that Mang Andoy had stopped plucking out of colors from the thin air with his magic brush. That very day, the grass lost its sheen of green, and for a brief moment, the sky stopped being blue. No one noticed that Maria had gone mute, her magic song suddenly turning to silence. That very day, it was enough to stop the flowers from blooming too much, or the birds from chirping from tree to tree. 
No one noticed that Pedrito had tossed away the lock of his magic dice or the speed of his magic ball. That very day, people began forgetting the games they knew and the play that made them remember their childhood. No one noticed when Rosario laid aside her magic cloud strainer that used to extract the sweetest juice from fruits, enough to quench the hardest tears. No one noticed that Aling Pining had let her pen go dry. Its magic ink crusted into a hardened blot on a piece of forgotten paper. Soon, there were no more lovers waking up in the middle of the night in the get, knowing only a driving passion of a kiss. Only Kulas, in his simple straw hat and white camison, so what was happening? And Kulas was sad. Everybody in the get soon became something else. Some became doctors, others became lawyers, and still others became engineers, nurses, call center agents, and accountants. And because there were no more magic brushes to paint, in the deepest, truest hue, the sky or the trees or the seas, there was only a dial mate to things, bordering on grey. Because there were no more magic verses or songs or dances, there was only a quiet, deadening reckoning that called simply for clicking on a compounded device of a strange picture box called a television that soon dulled the minds of the people of the Get village. Only Kulas kept his magic. No one watched, he would go to a quiet spot somewhere in a little alley, not too far away from the municipio, and there he would let his magic fly into the air to catch what was left of everybody's magic. Day after day, he kept to his old ways and came to know how magic was intimately part of the soul. In the beginning, he only flew his father's old enchanted cane that used to divine the proper path for any journey. Soon, the gravity of his abilities seemed to attract all others, abandoned relic of people's forgotten magic. To his flying orbit, came Rosario's magic cloth strainer, weeping through the air with its forgotten smells of miraculous concoctions. And then, there came Aling Pining's magic pen, scrolling on the air invisible words of forgotten charm poetry. And then, there came Mang Andoy's magic brush, tinting with a sudden burst of color any object that it touched. And then, there came Pedring's magic dice and ball, whizzing through the air with a supernatural speed. On and on, other magical objects flew around Kulas, and this happened almost every day in his quiet secret corner, until he would succumb to tiredness and sleep, and dream of old days when charm was the life of the get. But as the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months, life seeped away from the busy villagers, all of whom have succumbed to the drone of the everyday without the usual magic. One day, like a priest from a dead place, the get came to stand still. Nothing and nobody could move. There was a sheer paralysis that sprang from deep within each one's soul. It was so that the abundance of everyone's sadness soon gilled into a kind of smoke which then lifted to the air and turned everything gray. The sky was a slate. The earth was parched brown and cracked in places where grass used to grow in their wildest green. The mountains looked wasted and the air had no cackle of energy. 
When the people of the Geth finally came to their senses, they walked about the streets of the village in the snail gait of weary travelers and saw how everything looked old and tired and gray. I miss my colors. Mang Andoy said, I could have painted the sky a bright blue in the trees a verdant green. But Mang Andoy did not have his brush and so everything remained dull. I miss my song, said Maria. I could have breathed life into the absent birds and the wilting flowers with the quickening magic of melody and harmony. But Maria no longer had her singing voice and so everything remained dull and lifeless. It's my spirit and my love, said Pedrito. I could have given energy and the will to live to the parched earth. But Pedrito no longer had his dice or his ball, and so everything remained dull and lifeless and motionless. I miss my words, said Aling Pining. I could have written poetry to bring back the glow of the sun and the moon. But Aling Pining no longer had her pen, and so everything remained dull and lifeless and motionless and without glow. It was the boy Kulas who called them. Into his quiet corner they came, and saw the swirling objects gravitating in his presence. They were all manners of familiar objects, blaring in the soft orbits they kept around the boy. The people of the get listened carefully. I have everything we need to get our lives back. Kula said. And to make the get glow again with our forgotten magic. He turned to Mang Andoy and said, To paint is important. It gives color to our lives and puts to shape our secret dreams. Then he plucked from the orbit of flying things about him and gave Mang Andoy his brush back. To Maria, he said, To sing is important. It gives our lives freedom which keeps the universe humming in balance. Then he plucked from the orbit of flying things about him and gave Maria her singing voice back. To Rosario, he said, To bake and cook is important. It saves our desires and nourishes our hopes. Then he plucked from the orbit of flying things about him and gave Rosario her cloth strainer back. To his brother Pedring, he said, To play is important. Your ball is all of your memories of childhood and play, and your dice ensures the limitless possibilities of choice. Then he plucked from the orbit of flying things about him and gave Pedring his ball and dice back. To Aling Pining and said, to write is important. It is a chance to chronicle our stories, which is our lifeblood, and the chance to render in words what the moon could only glow, or the flowers could only bloom. To write is to understand our world. Then he plucked from the orbit of flying things about him and gave Aling Pining her pen back. Kulas gave everyone back their long lost magical things and said in a wizened voice, You can everything and anything you want in your life, but it will take our own real magic deep within ourselves to give all of us life of color, of energy and motion, of glow. To forget our magic is to forget what makes us who we are. Magic finally returned to the get in a rush of song and dance and play and color and food and poetry and everything was good. But you must know by now that this is really a story of a boy and how that boy grow up to be a wise man simply because he knew magic. Most of all, he knew how magic could make everyone's lives the stuff of stories with a happy ending. It could have even begun the moment when Pedrito, 
Kula's older brother whispered carelessly to a stray wind. I don't believe ma in magic anymore. <laughs> in magic anymore. <laughs> I miss my songs, said Maria. I could have breathed life into the absent birds and the wilting flowers with the quicker, the quicker air. <laughs> Said Aling Pinin. I could have written poetry <laughs> <laughs> It was the boy Kulas who called them. Into his quiet corner they came. And so, the swirling objects gravitating in his presence, they were all manners of familiar. Uy, ano? 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 The paint is important. Mingi, magagil. Ano, dali na, ayaw. To Maria, he said, To sing is important. It gives our lives rhythm which keeps the universe fuming in balance. Kami yun na ba? Layo kayo si Dixie. His brother, Pidring, he said, To play is important. Your ball is all of your memories of childhood in play. And your dice ensure the... Limitless possibilities of choice. Then he clapped from the house. Up, 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 up. Nah. Because there were no more magic verses or songs or dances, there was only a quiet, deadening reckoning that called simply for clicking on a confounded device of a strange picture box called a television that soon dulled the minds of people of the Get Village. I miss my speed and my luck. <laughs> I miss my speed and my luck. <laughs> I miss my speed and my luck. Said Pedrito. <laughs> I miss my speed and my luck. <laughs> I miss my speed and my luck. Said Pedrito. I have given. I have, I have given. I have. <laughs>